I have been in the industry for quite a bit. Uh, today I'm just going to speak a little bit about how you can abuse Laravel and why some people, after being working with it for quite a bit, will tell you what not to do, right? So I, I pretty much I didn't prepare like a big presentation. It's just I'm just going to tell you what my experience is and why I don't like doing these things this way nowadays. Uh, so one of the things that I will tell you n not to do is like, if you have worked with Laravel in the past, you might be familiar with these things. We have the facades, we have the helpers, containers, requests, and eloquent. So the problem with this thing is they are service locators. They are proxies. So when you use these things in your code, you pretty much are coupled to what Laravel does, and you are not sure what you are getting out of these uh, services. For example, if you are using the request, sometimes if you refer if you refer to the request out of the HTTP layer, what is going to happen is Laravel at the, uh, and, and a layer before. Like sometimes I have seen people using the request helper within a service provider. So what happened is like at this level of the application, Laravel doesn't know what the request is. So the problem is like when Laravel doesn't, doesn't know how to resolve a dependency, it just created out of a global dependency. So what happened is like if you are really down the layer, let's say you are the, uh, four, four steps down, you have a, a object that you have a controller, the controller knows about the request, but then you delegate to a service. So some people, what, what, what we'll do is like in these services, because they have access to these helpers and facade, they will call the, the request. So what they are getting down the road is just a global request. And <coughs> or, uh, more than that, your, your, your application is now coupled to an object that it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be coupled to that kind of objects, right? So the same thing happens with helpers, and the same thing happens with containers and requests. So I'm just going to go through a little bit of examples, and I'm going to tell you what why this thing is bad and how you can see in action. And as, uh, what is it, yes. So I have this a small example here. Um, so I have this controller. Everybody can see this controller? It's a bit small. I don't even know how to get this. And I think if I do this, yes, yes. So, you guys can see it, right? So, as I said, like if everybody is, if you have worked with Laravel, you can you can do it. You can access the Laravel services through the f helpers. You can you might achieve the same thing doing this. You can do the same thing, do this. <laughs> you actually can do the same thing, do it. This. <laughs> and so on, right? So there is a problem with the Laravel community nowadays. I would say the Laravel community because the people who, who really lead the project, in this case, we have Taylor, we have Jeffrey Way, and we have everybody. And it, they, they will tell you that this is right. This is the correct way to go, and this is what sh you should be doing. So. The, the first thing to understand here is like if, if, if we drop down a little bit down the road, like if you, if you go to the, uh, the unit testing level, it's like when you try to unit test this, this, this particular uh, piece of code, you are not going to be, to, you are not able to do it. The only, the only way for you to unit test this particular piece of code is if it's you go, and of course, 
they will provide you with the test case class. Are you guys who, who are familiar with Laravel now here? Few people, okay? So for the no Laravelians, <laughs> so Laravel provide a test case. It's, it's just a small wrapper uh, w uh, for their application. I, actually, we can see it here. If I can find it, yes. So <coughs> they just bootstrap the application and they just give you an application. So what happened is like in a unit test for to unit test your code to test your code. Actually, you will need to boot the application. So this is no a unit test anymore. And no matter what they can say to you, this is not. So why? Because when the when your test or your code or your particular object knows about the whole application, it's not a unit test anymore and it's not a good code anymore. So what you can do to test this yourself and see how how coupled to Laravel you are. You can just create a dummy test, and you can, of course, es extend from the PHP test case. Who is familiar with PHP unit here? Good. So when you est extend from the test case that the PHP unit gives you, you, are not, you, you don't have access to this kind of stupid things anymore. So then you will, you, you will, be, you will be able to understand what the issue is here. So if if we try to to call, let's call, I have a, this a small test. So this test is extending Laravel, and of course, it's making use of this refresh, refresh database trace that is just, it runs the migrations every time we run the test and, and so on. So if we hit the route, what route we are heading, uh, uh, what is this, it's here, huh. So one second. So I'm gonna be point, uh, I'm gonna be working with this particular route. It's just a dummy controller that I have. This controller doesn't do anything. The purpose of this controller is is just to show you how coupled we are to Laravel when we just abide to the rules that they say that they are the best rules to follow. So I'm gonna copy this route and I'm gonna go to the test the Laravel stands. So if we run this test, if we nearly look, I mean, you see that the test is passing, right? Why it's passing? We are just asserting that the code that we get out of the controller is a 200, so ev every response that Laravel gives you with the then controller is just transformed to a um, 200. So we can see her. Ah, uh, here. Here. Yeah, let's copy this. Actually, I meant to use this one. So if we run the test, okay, we have a 500 now. The, the config wasn't stopped, right? Yeah. Uh, the, you see? Add, no, no, no. add config, yeah. Uh, line 19. 19, 19 also. Config. Line 19. Oh, uh, you went past already. Yeah, config isn't spelled. Cool. Let's just forget about this one. <laughs> of course. Use config. <laughs> yeah. So. If you see it here, so we are just making sure that we are getting a 200 out of this controller, and out of nowhere, we are getting uh, our services. Right? We are ac accessing a configuration out of a global object. So two things to see here is like, if you see this configuration here, we are importing, even, even though we are working with a facade here, we are still working with a super glo global namespace, which is bad too. So why is bad? Because when, the service container, how it works in Laravel is like they, they will register all these facades for you automatically 
when it's bootstrapping. So this, this is going to be safe in the cache, and you will, be, you will have access to this, these services out of this global configuration. So the problem with this is like sometimes when you are running this code in, in the queue or, or in a CLI, the application doesn't know, doesn't know how to resolve these configurations namespaces. So you, you will get errors like, OK, this, this, this object wasn't found. So this is the first step. So if you really want to do this this way, you can just, just make sure you, you import the whole namespace. And you should be good to go. So you are not good to go there. Support slash <laughs> Oh, yeah. I don't use the dev. Yeah. <laughs> and when I use I, I use just PHP Storm, so it does it for me. <laughs> so, uh, so that's the first step, right? So something to see and to understand here about it is if we, if we drop down a little bit on what is that code quality and what an object should do is like every dependency that that an object is gonna work with, it should be injected through the constructor. Right, because what, what we have here is just a hidden dependency that then you are, as I said, you are coupled to a certain particular implementation. So the way how you can achieve this in a better way, you can pretty much create a uh, public, I said, man, I, mi I miss my PHP storm. <laughs> Just check this real quick. Bear with me, okay? So if we test the code again, we are e everything is gonna if it's gonna work the same. Actually, if you see it, if you see it here, so let's just. So we are getting just the application name, right? We, 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 we can achieve this, the same information. We, we can do it with the facade, with the container. So, but you can actually do this in a different way. So we have the dependency there. And we can do And with any luck, we have the same information. What is the difference here? The difference here is we are working with a dependency injection. Now we have a way how to mock those dependencies where we are testing. So if we, can, if we want to achieve what, uh, what was your name again, my friend? Ben. What Ben was saying, like we can, we can be like really independent from a framework. So if you are familiar with Laravel, so you can go to they, they have something called contracts. And you can actually you can import the contract. And with any luck, we can have it, the same thing. So as you can see, like, Laravel is an amazing framework. It is. That's why it's really famous. But the way how they handle dependencies and the way the, 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 I don't know, the, the habits that they are just promoting, they are really bad. So with this way, it's like we have a, we have a contract here, which is an interface. So if we, if we implement this interface, we get the same result. So as you can see, we have one, two, three, four, five, six different uh, ways how to resolve a dependency in Laravel, but 
the best way is going to be injecting your uh, dependencies through the constructor so you can have a, properly, a proper composition within your objects. So if we see if now if we go and, and try to run the same test, <coughs> we are testing the same. Uh, let's just try to test. On, on on PHP unit, so therefore we don't have access to Laravel in this case. So it's the same. Uh, it's the same file, and we are gonna. We are just gonna try to test the same. The same uh, particular method. So what's just gonna encounter here is like you have millions of errors, right? Why mi these millions of errors? Because in this case, uh, the way how Laravel works and the facades, they need to be registering within the same container, and this happens just when the application is being bootstrapped. And uh, so therefore, we don't have access to helpers. We don't have access to uh, configuration. We don't have access to anything. And this is, this is when you realize that how bad your code is, is becoming. Uh, so if you want to fix this thing within the approach that we were talking about, we can uh, where is it? Yeah. Okay, so this is the one that I need. Just close this one. This is the one I need. So we have the same errors, right? So how can we fix this problem? So we have been told that if we have the proper dependency injection, we can still test our code without changing our implementation. So the way how you can do that is if we refer to dependency injection approach, we can have this this way. And now if we come to this particular Test, we are going to see a different error, right? We are see that we need to inject uh, this guy. So if we go, and try to inject it. So. I think it will work. If I, eh, it wouldn't work. So, one second, okay, bear with me.
So they should be working. So, so this is this is how we achieve look what is what is called is a proper a proper dependency injection injection approach. So we need to build our uh, files in such a way that all the dependencies that this file needs are passed down uh, through the constructor. So another approach that I have seen in within the Laravel community is like some people will inject the container. So this while it will work for you is is a really bad approach because then you have you are creating just a factory here and now your controller knows how to build classes. So and this is bad. So you can you can inject the container here. So while you inject the container, of course the container is the the lot of a con uh, container is a, is an amazing piece of code because it will resolve any a, any object that you you are passing in and it will resolve the, the, your dependencies. But having the container here wouldn't solve your problems. So, but let me just give you this example. So we have the container. So we need to lock if we check. Now we are in the test that we are sending a lot of them. So hmm. why? <laughs> container. Container. Of course. <coughs> so, so you see how we can actually access the the, uh, the dependency to resolve our configuration file uh, object. But this is a really bad approach, though, because now your controllers, they know how to resolve services out of nowhere. And uh, so this is not, this is something that, that you shouldn't do. But if we drop, if we go to the uh, test case where we are extending uh, our PHP unit, sure enough, you can do the same thing here. So let's see how we can build this. Uh, This to work. Uh, you, you are lying to the and then your controller is two dependency injections. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, brother. Yeah. Sure enough, we have the same thing. But this is a really, this is, this is how you also can abuse Laravel because now you are injecting the container. And even though when you can, you might think, oh yeah, of course I am injecting a dependency. Now you con you, your controller knows about, have knowledge about your whole application. And last one, um, and oh, we have also the request here. So, 
something that I have seen also is like um, if you you can have access to the request. If you type in the request, in this case, Laravel, will, will, when, when you type in the request here in, within your method, you are actually getting the request that your application is receiving and in that particular moment. It, you, you will know that that is the request you are getting and it was created for you to use it within this request lifecycle. So the problem when we, but we have a beautiful helper here. We can access the request in this way. So the difference between those two particular calls here is like this request is going to be built for you out of the global configuration and you don't know whether it's the request that you are expecting or not. So it will be resolved for you and pretty much uh, you, will, you will receive the, the, the information you are getting but you are not working with the proper request that you were expecting. And it's the same. It's the same. It's the same uh, issue when we use this request within our service provider or within our services classes, because those requests are be, are, are being created from globals. So if you want to know what I mean, if you go a little bit down this road, public, I think index, no index. Uh, so this is when we create the request. And I'm not going to dig into the with you guys because you're going to fall asleep. But so we create the request there out of the, the, the global configuration. So this is bad tip. So please don't use it. If you will want to use it, well, that's up to you. But my best advice is not to use it. And last, but, uh, last one but not least is Eloquent. Eloquent is such an amazing piece of code, too. Uh, of course, uh, there is a really a strong opinion between what is a ORM, ORM and a CRM. I think it's CRM. I don't know how to spell it, though. So but it's just imagine who knows about doctrine? OK. So um, and who knows about Eloquent? So we know what we're talking about, right? So we have Eloquent is an active record, where the other one is just a, it's a data mapper. Uh, so there is a really strong opinion that I didn't know about it until this Eloquent bite my ass, actually. Uh, so yes, so how you can contain Eloquent? Um, so the the way how I do it, how I do it is like, of course, if you have <coughs> used Eloquent, you pretty much know that if you can access the database in this way, and there you go, you have your data, you have everything, everything is super nice, and you can do. Things like, even though the thing is like in this the, in this particular field, if you see it there, you might assume that it's a boolean, but it's a boolean value, right? But because Elo because we don't know what what we do is, uh, eloquent works with a mutator is called set attribute, so they, it doesn't know about types. So the problem is like it will find the index and it will just update it for you and you will be good to go. So when you realize that you fucked up, it's like you were just charging less money in your subscription, or you were giving, uh, you were uh, charging more taxes in somebody else's. Actually, I had this case where we were, uh, we had uh, a wallet implementation, and because of this beautiful magic, uh, we were just charging more uh, fees, percentage fees in those wallets w when we weren't supposed to do so. Coming back to this, it's like you see that this this particular piece of code is expecting a boolean, but you can actually do foo here. I don't know what this is. Did you create a user, or did you just? I think you just dumped the first user. Oh no! I think I think I I I. I I think it's called user. user. Yeah. 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 So there you go. And you call this beautiful thing here. Ah, ah. And I don't know where you have an error that you don't know what you're doing. Of course, if 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 you if you have luck enough, you have a, a proper. Uh, 
constraint in your database, so you are not going to update. You are not going to pass a string there. But yeah, so that's Eloquent. So the way how I, 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 I particularly use Eloquent is I try to use uh, as much accessors as, as I can. If we go to user, if I want to get the email, I wouldn't get the email out of the magic. I will create. So this is pretty much the same thing, but now I have a type that's going to tell me you either give me a string or a string. So then you are just pretty much um, making sure that you are getting the proper data. Another particular. Uh, yes. So actually, I also have like a similar issue to this. But what I did was I declared a type file PHP doc. Yeah, so PHP, yeah, it's, it's OK. I mean, the, the PHP doc blocks. My head might help you out when you want to run like a static analyze or whatever. But the thing is, like, if you don't have a proper test suite or if you don't have a proper design and you are working with a legacy code and you don't know what you're expecting there, then that that will that will not help you. Like, the, for example, those those doc blocks will help you just for auto completion or whatever. So you will might know. Actually, you can if you're working with something like uh, PHP Storm. If you don't have this method, you can pretty much declare the property here. You can just do like I think it's, it's property or whatever. I think it's property. Yeah. So you can, and you have the name there. So then you have the auto completion in your in, in your in your ID. But this is this is not type sensitive though. So this is what uh, this is what how you can achieve this part. The another thing that I do is uh, I have seen is like if if you have come across uh, any given uh, Laravel application, you will see how people access those particular eloquence call. They do the same thing, but they do it here. Now, the problem is you, you will have eloquent queries in all around your application, and you don't even know what the problem is. So my best suggestion to, for you is just create a repo. It's, a repository is not a repository pattern like we know, like people who knows uh, doctrine knows what a re proper repository pattern I'm talking about. But we can actually encapsulate eloquent logic behind a wrapper for us. So you can pretty much get, let's say you are injecting the repository, you can have repo. And you can do the same call. So you can call statically your, your eloquent in that repository. You can test it uh, uh, here in the database out of a proper feature test. And then you are sure that whatever information you are getting from that particular method is the one you are expecting. And in this, part, uh, and in this uh, file, you can mock it as we did with the configuration. And then you know that your code works. But uh, don't use eloquent outside repositories because it will beat you ass. <laughs> Uh, and yeah, any question? Can I test something with you? Yeah. So in Tinker just then, when you created a user and you said verify to foo, I noticed if you look at the SQL, it says verify equals foo with air quotes around it. You change the value of verify to the string of ID. Mm -hmm. Will that work for then actually set the value to ID? Because that's even more confusing. No, because it's, it's a still, uh, it's a still uh, a string. So it's expecting, uh, I'm pretty sure, I don't know, I, I don't remember about this database, but I'm pretty sure it's expecting. Uh, a tiny int. Yeah. So that's why the constraint because is there. I was wondering, when you look at the actual SQL that I have, it says equals ID. I was wondering you know, whether we get the value from the this field ID. This one here? Yeah, because ID there could potentially evaluate as the ID of the user. Mm. That's interesting. Stops yeah. So yes. So something that you can do is here if if you are expecting if a uh, uh, tiny int, I don't even know the how big that goes. But let's say you have your verification and you are thinking like, okay, I either I am gonna allow one 
for the user is verified or zero for the when the user is not verified but you can do pretty much this And if you see the, f the verification value, there is 99. Ah, ah, ah. So that is the, the, the problem when you are handling eloquent in when you don't know what you're doing. So the best way for you to do it is just learn how it works, and then just learn how you can contain it. Because if you are working as in a solo project, it's OK. You can do whatever the hell you want. But if you have one more person working with you, you are gone. So you need to properly do it, and you need to properly contain it. So. In closing, uh, there is nothing bad f for this approach, to be honest. Uh, the strong part of Laravel, and actually the why they gain the adoption is because of this. This is a really onboarding process, but you shouldn't do it. So just learn how it works, and just try to go under the hood, and then just hate it as much as possible. All right, thank you. Thank you guys for the talk <laughs> and here's your Oh my last one for the year. Yeah. I have flashes. Picture picture. I think Alright, cool. Okay. I have five already, I don't know, three, four. <laughs> so